All right, good morning. We had a, <clears throat> a few questions via email and through WebAssign about problems that uh, were giving some students some issues, so I figured I'd go through a few examples here um, because they said that there were no examples in the book or on WebAssign or practice problems there either. So, so here we go. Um, we'll tackle a couple of these, and uh, it should just take five, ten minutes or so. So the first one is the uh, product of third roots, and this one involves factoring uh, of what's inside the roots. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just look at what's inside here, and we're going to factor these things. So we've got 24. 24 is equal to 2 times 2 times, uh, let's see, 2 times 12, 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. So if we multiply this out, 4, 8, 24. Uh, 36, I'll do in green, is 2 times 18, which is 2 times 9, which is 3 times 3. Um, uh, let me make sure that I've not made a mistake here. 18, 2, oh, I think we're going to be okay here. So, uh, what we're trying to do here is simplify this product down. And the end result should be something like a number times a third root of whatever's, you know, not taken out to the third root. You see, whenever we've got a product of third roots, we can smash it together into one, right? There's this property of a to the one-third times b to the one-third, which again, our third roots, is equal to the product ab to the one-third. We can take third roots or square roots or what have you, and we can smash them all together like this. So we're going to do that with 24 and 36. And we're going to use the same property to split these things apart again in, in nice ways. So the first way I'll do, the, uh, do that, the first thing I'll do for that is um, take this first root, and I see I've got three twos in there multiplied together. That's two cubed. And I'm going to break this first third root into two third roots. The third root of two cubed times the third root of three. I just applied that property that we had to the factors of 24. Okay. Now I'm also going to do that to the third root of 36. But I'm going to break it up into this and this. Okay. Now we're going to try and simplify this as much as we can. I hope we can see that the third root of 2 cubed, that's just 2. Okay, Third root of a cube is just the value in there, so this is 2. Um, we're going to apply that same property that we just did to combine these two. So this is the third root of 3 times 3 squared, which is 3 cubed. We're going to leave this third root of 2 squared alone. The cubed root of 3 cubed is 3. So we've got, almost done here, 2 times 3, which is 6, times a third root of 2 squared, or a third root of 4. So we've taken out all of the factors that we possibly can, and I hope that we've noticed that we were able to take them out whenever there were three of them multiplied together because we were taking third roots. So there were three twos multiplied together. That turned into a two because we were taking the third root of that. We had one, two, three, threes multiplied together. We were able to combine them into a single cubed root and then essentially take them out. The things that were left over were the the numbers in the product of which there were not three. So we had an extra group of two twos here that we couldn't take out of the third root. So final answer is just this six times the third root of two squared or third root of four. Okay, and that was the first problem that we dealt with or in a question. The next one is uh, <clears throat> involves questions like this where you've got fractions of fractions. There are similar ones that students often have issues with. A fraction over a fraction. 
Um, and so maybe I'll start with this bottom one and then I'll move into the top one. So real quickly, the way to handle fractions like this is to multiply by a clever one, and it's a big one. Okay, it's a big one because it looks like a fraction on the, the fraction we have on the left. It's a fraction of fractions, but it's a special one that relates to the denominator of our fraction of a fraction that we begin with. We're going to take the bottom fraction here. We're going to take its reciprocal and use that in our big one fraction. So I'm going to take 8 fifths and 8 fifths and write it as a fraction of fractions. This is just 1, right? 8 fifths divided by 8 fifths is 1. When we handle or when we multiply fractions like this, we treat it just like multiplication of fractions any other time. We multiply the tops and the bottoms, tops and bottoms, so that we get this. 1 times 8 over 7 times 5 over 5 times 8 over 8 times 5. So it's still a fraction of fractions, a compound fraction, but it's got a nice form to it. It's 8 over 35 over 40 divided by 40, which is 1. A number divided by 1 is just the number. So the final result is just 8 over 35. We're going to try and force this upper problem to the same type of form. We're going to try and turn this addition and turn this subtraction of, of fractions into just one fraction each. And then we're going to apply the same rule. Okay, because we can, now that we've seen this, we can do this fraction of fractions simplification by multiplying by one. We just need to sort of figure out how to turn this type of problem into that. So let's, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the way we do that is by finding common denominators. Right? To add fractions or subtract fractions, you, you try and find a common denominator, which sometimes is just the product of the denominators, as is the case in the top here, uh, but sometimes it's the least common multiple like we have in the bottom when those numbers are not co-prime. So <clears throat> on top, we're going to make a fraction that looks like this. We're going to take both denominators, 7 and 3, we're going to multiply them together. In a, in a more explicit manner, what we're doing is we're multiplying this left fraction by 3 thirds and this right fraction by 7 sevenths to do that. Then they have common denominators of 7 times 3 and 7 times 3. Right, but we have to multiply by 1 whenever we're doing things like this, so we need to add the 3s and the 7s up top as well. So the fraction up top has a common denominator of 7 times 3, which is 21. And when we've adjusted the numerators, we get this, 3 plus 14. Now on bottom, we're not going to do this same method of using the product of the denominators as our common denominator, because if we did that, we'd get something that's too big. Right, 32 is definitely divisible by both 8 and 4, which is what 8 times 4 is. But we can actually just use a smaller number when we're trying to find the smallest common denominator, the least common denominator, because 8 is divisible by both 8 and 4. Right? So we're going we're gonna to use 8 as our common denominator here. And how do we get 8 on the left fraction? Well, it's already there. We don't need to multiply by anything. We'll just multiply by 1, if, or just forget about it, right? Um, on the right, we don't have an 8. We've got a 4, but we can get an 8 by multiplying by 2. So we multiply by 2 over 2, which is just 1, to get that 8 in the denominator. And that gives us common denominators now. We've got 5 eighths minus 
2 eighths. So this is 5 minus 2 over 8 now. We're going to do some simplification here, which is just adding and subtracting. to get that. And now that you see that, I hope you know what to do because we just did that in the previous problem. You've got a fraction of fractions. What you do is you multiply by one, a big one, and that one has the form of the reciprocal of the denominator. Eight thirds over eight thirds. When we do this multiplication, we get 17 times 8 over 21 times 3, divided by 3 times 8 over 8 times 3. The top, I'll leave to you, <laughs> the bottom is just 24 divided by 24, which is 1. So this result is just um, mm, 136 which is 8 times 10, which is 80, plus 8 times 7, which is 56, divided by 63. Okay, so it's the same thing we did in the previous example um, from here on. Um, but to get there, we had to find common denominators and then simplify those fractions. So, so that's the basic process in problems like this. Uh, the next problem was this one or something similar to this uh, and it's sort of similar to what we did in the first part but we're going to have to um, deal with this subtraction sign okay so in that first problem if you remember we had to simplify the roots first before we could do any sort of you know manipulation of other things we looked for patterns of you know something cubed so two cubed or three cubed and then we could take those out of the radicals. We're going to do the same thing here. Um, so we've got a 3 here and a 3 here. So we're looking for, again, perfect cubes that we can take out. Um, so explicitly, I'm going to re rewrite this uh, to try and get cubes. So uh, here we go. We've got this first one cubed root of x cubed times x cubed times x squared. This looks strange, but uh, you know, 3 plus 3 plus 2 is 8. So I'm going to do it this way because this is, I think, as explicit as I can make it. Um, the next one we're going to turn into this. Um, 125 is just 5 cubed times x squared. So now we can sort of see there's several cubes lying around. x cubed twice and then 5 cubed once. So we're going to split up this radical, the third root of x cubed times the third root of x cubed times the third root of x squared minus the third root of 5 cubed times the third root of x squared. You could totally do this in a simpler manner, I suppose, but I, I want this to just be as explicit as possible, and, and we're looking for cubes, right? You could alternatively write this as x to the sixth to the third power, or to the one-third power, and then turn this into just x to the sixth times one-third, and you get x squared over here. Uh, but but we're going to see that happen here uh, in just a few more steps, make it a little bit more of a pattern thing. So here, this is, this cubed root of x cubed is just x. This cubed root of x cubed is just x. So we get x times x. That's the x squared times the third root of x squared he here. Minus the third root of 5 cubed is just 5 times the third root of x squared. We have to leave. Okay, and we're pretty close. In this problem, the, the, 
the uh, instructions were to simplify. So this is this is pretty simple, but there's one thing further that we could probably do. I'll just write this out here. Right. So when you're when you're doing this computation, it'd be really nice if you uh, didn't have to, um, you know, compute the third root of x squared twice. So the way we think about getting rid of that extra step is by factoring it out. So both of these have a factor of the third root of x squared. So we're going to undistribute it, right? It's been distributed. Now we're going to undistribute it. <laughs> so we're going to pull it out like this. So we're undistributing it. Each of these, the 5 and the x squared, had a factor on them of the third root of x squared. We're going to pull it out. And that is the final simplest form. Just a product of x squared minus 5 times the third root of x squared. Later on in the course we'll learn how to tackle something like this um, and simplify it even more, but for now this will do. I think this is probably simpler. Okay. So I hope that helps with your questions on the homework problems, um, and uh, I'll see you next time.